It's a place called the tomb. It's the most fortified, impossible place to escape from. I know because my character built it. And now, through a series of, let's say, betrayals, I'm stuck in it. And now, how do I get out of it? I can't. I made it perfectly escape-proof. But there's one man in there who has the secret, a very mysterious character, and that's Arnold's character. And he seeks me out, and we start to make this, they call this a buddy movie, it's not. We're not, we're anti-buddies, we don't even like each other. But by the end of the film, we do. We start to realize that we cannot make it alone. And we build this friendship, and in doing that comes this intelligence and a way to beat the machine. It's an escape movie. <clears throat> it's a, a place, a, a prison that uh, you know we would never get out of. I mean, it's built that way. And um, I think that when they said no one would ever get out, they were right. But no two. They forgot about that, that when people actually work together, that there was a chance. And so this is what we... we, we because we, we took are that geniuses. Up, yeah, we we have to throw that in. We but just we went, have to be two geniuses at me. But to get there, <laughs> it took a lot of torture, because every time we, they caught us, trying to escape, we were tortured, brutalized in, in, in the worst possible way. Right. And so it, it, it really is a, 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 a very dramatic movie, but also action-packed, and it gives people uh, what they have been waiting for for decades, which is for Sly and me to do a movie together from the beginning to the end, a real action yeah, movie. Yeah, we're actually we're and, working together as opposed to being total adversaries, which is <laughs> unexpected. This is one of the biggest travesties that our representation couldn't come up with. With all the script writers at the golden age of action, they came up with where it's cross-dressing cops, he's a mouse, I'm a dog, or whatever, we're warring neighbors, fighting over a leaf blower. You name the dumbest situations, they couldn't come up with, he belongs here, I belong there, and we're just coming together and we join forces. No one can put that together. Isn't that weird? Yet here we are now, at this particular day and age, uh, doing it ourselves, basically. We, we did this. We, we actually engineered this, this situation. But it is. It's, it's very, very odd. The golden opportunity was there. And it's <laughs> so we just had to take advantage of it on our own. Uh, it took us... Um an entire day from morning to night to film the fight scene because it was covered from various different angles. Many takes were taken. And uh, when you want to do something like that, well, you know, it takes a lot of effort and luckily we were in shape so that we could do that. But we also had to think about all the time that for decades, mm -hmm. uh, fans were asking, you know, when do we ever see you guys fighting and being in a movie together? And here was the opportunity. So we realized that, that even though it was written as a small fight scene, but we then you know, worked with the director to make it a major fight scene. And it also has some comic uh, stuff in there. Yeah, in the there's fight an scene. intelligence it's about a, the reason for it. Yeah, it's, so, so it was really a great fight scene. And like I said, you know, we uh, rehearsed. We uh, wanted to make sure that we don't need to use stunt doubles for that. And uh, so you know, the people are really going to get a visual feast when they watch that. <laughs> That's for sure. I love the guy. Uh, Mikkel is, you know, he's, he's, he's from Sweden and he's extremely specific and uh, serious about his work. No question about it. So, and he's, and he's not afraid to come up and suggest that where some directors are intimidated, which I, would, I wish they wouldn't be, but some people are. And they don't express themselves until the movie comes out. I'm saying, why didn't he ask that? Well, this he does. And he was cognizant of who Arnold and I were what we wanted to facilitate out of this film and how he could get that performance from us. So he was very, very, very open about it and we just had a great time with him. The most important thing on um, a director is that he's a visionary. You gotta have a very clear vision of what the movie ought to look like on the screen. 
so that you can go out and direct the, 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 the actors and uh, all the people in the movie and uh, give instructions to the director of photography and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, this guy had a very clear vision. So, but not only was he a visionary, but also he was a master in details. And he was not intimidated, like Sly said, to ever tell us what to do, no matter if it was one time or if it was 10 times. He would just come to you, he would never be intimidated, he just comes to you and says, no, no, you misunderstood, I want you to do it this way. And Sly, I know you want to be closer to the camera now, but no, you can't be, you have to step back and blah, blah. So he will be just, you know, yeah. he will really have the boss to be in there and to tell you what to do over and over in order to get the scene right. And I really like that about the director because, you know, as an actor, you really never know exactly. No, you know, you because don't. you don't have a mirror in front of you. No. So, so you need someone that guides you and that is strong enough and not to be intimidated, especially with the two of us there. And he was excellent. And also with the editing process, that's another thing. You see, the movie is made in a, uh, writing the script. That's one way you create the movie. Then how do you shoot it? How do you kind of translate uh, what is in a script? And then how do you edit the movie? There's the third step where you can screw up a movie, and he was also good in that step. So to yeah. me, that's what made him really a very desirable uh, director true. and someone that I want to work with again. Jim Caviezel is just an excellent actor. He's a great physical specimen, fantastic looking guy, and has cultivated this sense of underplaying, which, because he's so confident, he's so sinister. So Jim Caviezel knocks it out of the park, as far as, because I didn't see it that way. Usually you see a big blustering, threatening warden. This is almost delicate, and which makes it even more sinister. So he, he was fantastic in that. And the rest of the people, we didn't even associate with. So that's just because we're yeah. smug that way. That's right. No, no <laughs> actually, everyone else. The other fellow whose name I, I don't remember, uh, he, he was fantastic. The fellow who played uh, you know, the, the Muslim fellow, he was great in it too. I think 50 it's Cent just, was also great. And 50 yeah. Cent was in it. Was Amy. Terrific. Amy was ter terrific in it too. And so there's so many people that it, it's hard to remember because I spent so much time with Arnold, incarcerated, and very little time with anyone else that I just got to know him better.